Hey there, welcome to Gander Flight. I'm Joshua, and today I want to talk to you about installing a hitch on your vehicle. And one big consideration it's going to help you to choose between installing an aftermarket hitch or an OEM hitch. So you're adding a hitch to your vehicle, whether it be for a bike rack, a canoe loader, a cargo rack, or to pull a small utility trailer, or even an RV. There's lots of options out there, lots of brands that offer aftermarket hitches for your vehicle. But one thing I want to point out to you that was brought to my attention when I was adding a hitch to our minivan is ground clearance. Oftentimes, the OEM hitches are going to sit higher up in the vehicle because they were designed to fit that vehicle. Some of the aftermarket ones find bolts to bolt onto into the subframe or the frame of the vehicle and they sit much lower. As you can see on this example of a small crossover, the aftermarket hitch sits below the bumper and the trim, whereas the OEM hitch, and it sits five to six inches higher than the aftermarket. And that extra five or six inches of ground clearance, or lack of ground clearance, makes all the difference when you're adding weight to a hitch. You can see here on this minivan that the OEM hitch sits two to three inches higher than the aftermarket hitch. Now yes, you're gonna pay more for an OEM hitch most of the time. However, I found in my research and my experience that it's worth the extra money because that ground clearance and especially the departure angle off the back of your vehicle really makes a difference going in and out of gas stations, going in and out of driveways. Especially if you're doing a utility trailer or an RV, adding that weight to the back end of your vehicle, it's definitely worth it having a, several more inches on that ground clearance. Now some vehicles, it doesn't matter. I've often seen on a lot of trucks that if you buy an aftermarket hitch versus the OEM hitch, they mount to the same place, they come out on the same point of the bumper, and so it doesn't matter. The point of this video and my advice to you is make sure that you pay close attention to your specific vehicle, whether the aftermarket hitch, which is going to be cheaper, is the same mounting points and same spot where that hitch is going to come out off your bumper as the OEM hitch. So a good rule of thumb that I found in my research is if the hitch sits lower than the exhaust pipe, that's when you're going to run into clearance issues. I hope this piece of information brought something to your attention that you may not have considered. Now I also want to point out that just because you buy an OEM hitch does not mean that you have to pay to have it installed. Oftentimes you can order OEM hitches from dealers and or online retailers and then install it yourself just as you might an aftermarket hitch. So I know the ground clearance issue was the main reason that I bought an OEM hitch for our minivan when we had it installed. And I wanted to point out that there are differences, often several inches, five, six inches. That's a huge difference in ground clearance and departure angles. If you're adding a hitch to your vehicle, make sure you pay close attention to what the options are and then choose the best one that fits your needs and your budget. And after you get your hitch installed, if you find that you have a bike rack or a cargo rack that as you're going down the road kind of tips back and forth just because there's a slight bit of play between the receiver and the mount, Definitely grab a hitch tightener. It's a U-bolt with a metal plate that you tighten down. It takes out that slop and it stops your cargo from going back and forth. Because there's nothing worse than looking out the back and seeing your bike rack go dunk, dunk, dunk. If you gained some value from this video, go ahead and show me some love down below. Comment, is ground clearance something you thought of with an aftermarket versus an OEM hitch? If you're into DIY things, I invite you to check out our group, DIYers, Tinkers, Fixers, and Makers. I'll put a link in the description down below for that. And check out genderflight.co for all the DIY projects, tinkering, fixing, making, and RV related content. Until next time, I'm Joshua and you've been watching Gender Flight. Take care and pay it forward.